Hi folks, uh, my name is Al Basil, I'm with uh, EPA uh, right here in what we call Region 8 uh, in Denver, Colorado. And I'm going to jump right in, I know we're running a little bit behind schedule, so I'm going to try and move us along as quick as we can, I guess. Okay, this is a slide uh, I use way too frequently, but uh, it really illustrates an important point. And I think we heard this yesterday at the lunchtime uh, presentation as well. Um, nutrients are um, incredibly important for aquatic life, they need nutrients. But too many nutrients can create some significant problems for our nation's lakes, streams, and coastal waters. Okay, some of the problems that nutrient pollution can cause, um, and I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of this already, uh, they can degrade habitat for fish and wildlife, render water bodies unsafe for swimming and other forms of contact recreation, create a public health concern for drinking water supplies, decrease property values, and negatively impact local economies. The background photo on this slide is kind of neat. It's an aerial photo um, of Lake Champlain. It just gives you a kind of a, a rough idea of the scale of some of these algae blooms that can result from excess nutrients. In this particular bloom, uh, blue-greens are well known for their potential to produce toxins. And they also have some pretty interesting names. This particular genus um, that's blooming in the lake in this photo is known as a phanazomenon. It took me a little while to be able to pronounce that. Uh, finally got it down though. Uh, so again, you know, just illustrates that scale and, and the magnitude of some of these blooms. Okay, national scope. Um, more than 45% of streams have medium to high levels of nutrients. Approximately 4 million lake acres are identified as either threatened or impaired. Approximately 78% of assessed coastal areas exhibit signs of eutrophication or excess nutrient enrichment. The occurrence and severity of nuisance algal blooms is on the rise, and algal toxins have potentially serious human health and ecological effects. Okay, right here in um, the six state region that we call EPA Region A, we have more than 8,000 river miles and greater than 300,000 lake acres uh, presently identified as either threatened or impaired because of nutrient pollution. Also important to mention, and I'm sure you folks have heard a lot about this, is that nutrients can be transported great distances and impact areas far downstream. And this map illustrates how phosphorus is de delivered to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the, the Gulf of Mexico uh, dead zone being uh, roughly the third largest in the world, uh, in some years larger than the state of Connecticut. Okay, next I just want to share a few more photos from around the country just to kind of capture uh, some some of the bigger problems uh, you know that we're, we're encountering and, and this the first one here being Chesapeake Bay uh, this is an aerial photo of a large algae bloom on the bay and you know as most of you folks probably know there's a tremendous amount of work going on in Chesapeake Bay right now uh, to try and reduce nutrient pollution and restore some of the uses to this water body yeah this is a satellite image of Lake Erie you know again this kind of um, highlights uh, the scale of some of these blooms I mean, here you can see, uh, this is a microcystis bloom. This is another genus of blue-green algae, also a toxin producer. Um, here you can see that um, the bloom covers, you know, the western basin of the lake and extends along most of the northern shoreline as well. That's a close-up of the microcystis bloom on Lake Erie. This is an anabana bloom, um, another genus of blue-green algae, also a toxin producer, and this is on the west coast now, state of Oregon, the name of the lake here is Odell Lake. Here's a few examples right here in our region, eight, uh, the state of Montana, and these are just stream examples, and here the nutrients have manifested themselves in the form of attached algae, which you can see um, uh, degrade habitat for aquatic life and also uh, make these waters less desirable for you know, contact recreation, other forms of recreation. This is probably the worst one I've had, or the worst one I've seen. When I first looked at this photo, it's Grand Lake St. Mary's in Ohio, and I thought it was during the ice fishing season and I was looking at ice cover. But the photo was actually taken during the month of June, and it is an algae bloom, um, which has really created significant problems for this resource. It's Ohio's largest natural lake. Um, Prior to having issues with these blooms, um, the tourist industry saw about 700,000 visitors annually. And right now, I mean, the main concern is really, you know, making sure public are protected and, and 
we're not swimming in these waters when they look like this. Okay, so what is EPA doing to help address nutrient pollution? Uh, I'm going to run through this list. It's, it's about seven or eight. I'll go through it quickly. And um, a lot of this, again, you pro probably already know. I mean, number one, we're providing states with technical assistance and other resources to help develop water, cri water quality criteria for nitrogen and phosphorus. And, and many of you know this as numeric nutrient criteria. Uh, next, we're working with states to identify waters impaired by nutrients and, and developing restoration plans. And you probably know this, you've heard the, uh, the acronym TMBL, and that's what I'm referring to here. Uh, next, uh, awarding grants to states to address pollution from non-point sources, such as agriculture and stormwater runoff. And this would be EPA's non-point source program, or the 319 program. Uh, fourth, uh, administering a permit program designed to reduce the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus discharged to the environment from point sources. Fifth, providing funding for the construction and upgrade of municipal wastewater treatment plants. Sixth, working with states to reduce nitrogen, nitrogen oxide emissions from air sources. Next, conducting and supporting extensive research on the causes, impacts, and best approaches to reduce nutrient pollution. And then last, and trying to improve our collaboration with other, fe other federal partners, including USDA and all stakeholders, including the agricultural community. And it's certainly not a comprehensive list, but it gives you a rough idea of kind of the big things that we've been working on over the past really 10, 15, even 20 years. Okay, so with all this work that we've been doing over the past decade, 15 years, um, progress has been somewhat slow. And this is a, for us, it's, a, it's an incredibly large challenge tackling the nutrient pollution issue, and we have an incredibly long way to go. Okay, realizing the need for greater action in March of 2011, uh, EPA issued a memo with a very long title that I'm not going to read, um, but what was emphasized in this me memo was that nutrient pollution continues to um, have the potential to be one of the costliest and most challenging environmental problems that we face, and it reaffirmed the agency's commitment to partner with states and stakeholders to make greater progress in reducing nutrient loading to our nation's waters. And with respect to the agricultural community, uh, we're working on uh, the following actions. Um, first, you know, we want to continue to improve our dialogue between EPA, states, and the agricultural community, one of the reasons that you know, we're here today presenting and participating. Uh, next, we want to continue to build partnerships. And we want to continue to also continue to improve data utilization. We want to do a better job in sharing information with the agricultural community and explaining that information as well. And lastly, we want to collaborate with USDA and the ag community to facilitate forums on best available and emerging technologies. A few examples, I mean, there's a, a number of collaborative efforts going on around the country, and, you know, here's a few examples of some of those. I won't go through all of them. Uh, one that, you know, that I'm particularly proud of right now that we're working on is an uh, effort we're working with North Dakota, uh, where it's uh, the state's actually establishing or trying to develop a nutrient management strategy, a statewide strategy, and it involves a very comprehensive group of stakeholders, um, which, is, which is what we think needs to be done. And finally, uh, you know, we value your input. You know, as we continue to move forward, um, you know, please let us know what else we can do to help uh, the agriculture industry reduce its environmental impact. You know, we're here to listen. I've got a phone number. I'd be glad to talk to folks, you know, after the meeting today. Um, you know, we're really receptive to hearing your thoughts. And that will wrap it up for me. Thanks very much for having me speak today. Thank you very much.